Hello, so today we will be solving this problem called factory machines. A factory has n machines which can be used to make products. Our goal is to make a total of t products. For each machine, you know the number of seconds it needs to make a single product. The machine can work simultaneously and you can freely decide their schedule. What is the shortest time needed to make tea products? The first input line has two integers n and t, the number of machines and products, and the next line has n integers k1 through kn, the time needed to make a product using each machine. So here we have an example. We have three machines and we need to make seven products and the answer is eight and we have an explanation here so machine one makes two products that is in eight minutes machine one can make uh, two products because that would take it six minutes and if he wanted to make three products it would require nine minutes Machine 2 makes 4 products because 8 divided by 2 is 4 and machine 3 makes 1 product 8 divided by 5 is actually 1 so 1 plus 2 plus 4 that would give us 7 that's why the answer is 8 okay let's uh, see another example and try to come up with a solution okay so Let's see another example, say we have 5 machines and we want to make 15 products and the performance of each machine, let's say we have 2, 5, 4, 9 and 6 for example, okay and let's create a table here, let me be more precise, so Let's create a table. We will have two things. Here it would be, here we would have the time needed. Yes, time. And here we have products. Okay, let's bring this over here. Okay. So, in zero time, it's obvious we're gonna make zero products. If we take one second, uh, one second is not enough to make a product in none of these machines, so zero again. If we have two seconds, this machine will, will make one product, and these won't make any, so we'll have one product. Okay, let's move on. Three machines, same thing, one product. Uh, four. four, we would make two products using this machine and one using this one, so three, five, five, we would make two products using this one, one product using this one and one product using this one, so four, six, six, we could make one product using this one, one product using this one, so that's two. Three products using this one, so that's five, and one using this one, so six. Nice. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Within seven seconds, we, we could make one product using this machine, one using this one, and one using this one, three using this one, so six again. In 8 seconds, we would make 1 using this one, 1 using this one, 2 using this one, so that's 4, and 4 using this one, so the answer becomes 8. And with 9, we could make 1 using this one, and 1 using this one, 1 using this one, 2 using this one, so that's 5, and 4 using this one, so that's 9. And with 10, we could make... 1 using this one, 2 using this one, so that's 3, 1 using this one, so that's 4, 2 using this one, so that's 6, and 5 using this one, so that's 11. 
And so we won't go, in order not to go any fur further, let's say we wanted to make seven products instead. Okay, what you can notice here, uh, if, if we wanted to make seven products, the answer in this case would be eight. Because this is the earliest time we are able to make eight products. We could, we could repeat this process like go from i equals one or zero to uh, here we would for here if we read the problem carefully we might want a billion products and if all these case if we had n equals one and uh, k1 equals one this means that uh, or k1 equals a billion so we would require a billion second to make just one product so in order to make a billion product we would require 10 times 10 to the 18th so that is to say we would have to go from i equals 1 to i equals 10 to the 18th and stop and for each value if get of i is greater or equal to needed print i break so that's what we would need to do like what we did here we would go through all possible times and then for each value for each time we check the number of products we can make and if that value is greater than the value we want we would stop but see here, we would have to go from 0 to 10 to the 18th. That is to say, we would require 10 to the 18th instructions. So, this would require 10 to the 18th instructions. And we said that uh, it takes us one second to execute 10 to the 7th instructions. So, our program would run in 10 to the 11th seconds which is very very large that's 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 like unimaginably long time so that's not feasible but what we can notice here is that is, these values never grow like they are strictly increasing like these values the number of products we make are all increasing if this value is valid then all these values will be valid and all these values are not valid and the number of products we make is strictly increasing so this when we have something like this when we have a predicate this is called a predicate and a predicate means something that is either true or false when we have a predicate like this and we have a block of false 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 followed by a block of true 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 then uh, the first idea that should come to mind is binary search so why binary search and what is binary search binary search is a way of finding this magic position like it, it it allows us to find this magic position that we are looking for in in a very fast manner so we are looking for this eight and using binary search we can find it really quickly like as we said here all the possible values would go from 0 to 10 to the 18th so we would have a pointer here here we had uh, 10 okay so we take our array and check for the middle value the middle value here is 5 is 5 enough we ask ourselves is 5 enough to make 7 products the answer is no because 5 only allows us to make 4 products that means that we don't need to look here because all these values won't give us an answer if 5 is not enough 4 is clearly not enough then our lower bound becomes this so in the beginning we had a low and a high and this was the mid now this becomes we bring our low here 
Now this is our low and this is our high. So the mid would be something in the middle, say it's here. It would be just high plus low divided by 2. And we ask ourselves, is 7 enough? 7 makes 6 products, but we need 7 products, so 7 is not enough as well. So we don't need to check any of this. And we bring our low here. Now, our middle becomes somewhere around here. So now we use this 9 to check. 9, nine gives us 9 products, is, and it is enough to make 7 products. When that's the case, it is the high that we move so we bring high here so this is our low this is our high and the middle would be eight like somewhere around here and we check whether or not eight is suitable and the answer is yes it is suitable so we bring high here and when low and high become equal that's when we know that we have to stop and the answer is eight so to sum up Binary search can be applied here because we have a predicate that is to say something that is uh, true or false and it has this form like true 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 false 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 or false 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 true 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 then uh, we just start we, ha we have three variables, uh, low, high, and mid. And using these three variables, we just keep moving them until we find this magic value where they touch. We're going to see this in more detail in code. And if you want to learn more about binary search, let me know in the comment section. And I will make a detailed video about binary search. So now let's go ahead and check out our code. So we we'll start by reading n and m. n is the number of machines and m is the number of products I want to make. I will declare a vector of ints that will store our like the efficiency of the machines, the time required to make uh, one product by each machine. And then I will scan those values. And these are the values we said we would need for binary search. We need low, which is zero. And we need high, which is the largest time that we would require. And the largest time here is clearly 10 to the 8, because the worst case scenario is that we only have one machine and it takes 10 to the 9 to make one product. And we want 10 to the 9th product, so we would require 10 to the 9 times 10 to the 9, which is 10 to the 18. And the template for binary search is something like this. We have a loop that will go on until low becomes equal to high. We declare a variable that is that we call mid, that is equal to low plus high divided by 2. And we declare this variable products with which we will calculate the number of products we can make with this map. So for int i equals 0, i less than n, i plus plus, we calculate for each machine the number of products it would give us. And to do that, we just calculate uh, mid divided by machines, as we saw in the description. And I'm using min here to avoid any overflows. Say, for example, I had uh, two, uh, a thousand machines and all were able to make a product in one second. Then, and mid was a equal to like to 10 uh, times to 10 to the 18th. Then each one of my machines would give me 10 to the 18th product. And if I sum them all, I'm going to exceed the max of long, long. So that's not good. That's why I'm using this. Uh, I'm meaning the number of uh, of products I can make with one billion. That way I make I make sure that it will never overflow. Then, uh, if the number of products I can make using this mid is larger than the number of products I want, like here, like if I am. In this case, if, if the number of products 
uh, if like if it is true if the number of products is larger than the number of products i need we said that we're gonna decrease high we're gonna bring it to the previous value of mid that's why we do here so uh, high becomes mid minus one and if the mid i'm using now is larger is less than uh, my answer my answer is initialized with uh, 10 to the 18th and if it is because i want to find the smallest value that gives me a number of products larger than the number of products i want so if mid is less than answer answer equals mid this is just to update my answer to the smallest value that gives me a number of products larger than the number of products i want otherwise I will just increase low to become mid plus one and this will this loop will keep going until low becomes equal to high and as you can see here like we saw here that this is what's magical the binary search uh, our first approach that we described above would require 10 to the 18th instructions now uh, each time we uh, each loop during each loop of that while loop we divide our interval by two so if we like here we started by 10 and we checked by we checked with five we found that five is not suitable so our interval got divided by two so it became just five then we divided by two it becomes just two and then we divide it by 2, we get to 1 and we stop. We see that each time we divide our interval by 2. And if we do this for 10 to the 18th, we would go from 10 to the 18th instructions to something very small, like to 35 instructions. Actually, it would go to 64 instructions. Because 2 to the 64 is, is around 10 to the 18th or 63, I'm not sure. What I want to say here is that uh, the complexity of binary search is log n and it can handle very large intervals like from 0 to 10 to the 18th in very fast in just 64 iterations. So that's pretty much it. At the end we're just gonna print our answer. So let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.